Okay, so the presentation today is about the Kedges technique and specifically using the Gino Grinder to help improve the technique. So we're looking to improve the consistency, the throughput, and the recovery for the technique. So just to go back to the beginning of, of Kedges, um, or at least summarize what it is, Kedges method is an easy and inexpensive sample preparation method for the analysis of pesticide residue contaminants in food or beverage products. And the acronym is quick, easy, cheap, efficient, um, and uh, rugged and safe. So the samples are normally shaken in 50 ml falcon tubes or centrifuge tubes with salts and solvent for one minute. And then that's followed by a centrifugation, a cleanup step, and then perhaps another um, step uh, that requires shaking, and then the analysis is completed by GCMS. And there are some variations of the methods uh, around the world. There's certainly some variations between the European and the US, US methods. Uh, broadly, they, they follow the same concept. So the catchers uh, was actually um, originally started by four, let's say, inventors in the early 2000s. They wanted to improve the process of pesticide extraction. They wanted a quicker, cheaper, yeah, you've guessed it, more efficient way of extracting pesticides. And uh, there are a couple of people that you, you may have seen at some of the conferences uh, around the world. Uh, one of them is Michelangelo Anastasias here at the top. He's a lead researcher at Stuttgart University in Germany. He's actually a user of the Geno Grinder. And then here you have Steve Lahote. He's a lead researcher of the US FDA. And in fact, the original website, you can still visible and available, you can see that here at the bottom of the page, and you can actually see a little bit more information about the original research group and some of the uh, publications they, they posted. One thing to bear in mind now, of course, is that catches is not just for pesticides. It's effective actually approving analyte extraction from um, food, and, uh, food products for analysis of uh, other contamination as well. So for example, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, Ketchers technique could be applied to that. So for example, oil spills, cannabinoids in, um, in cannabis, THC, CBD, antibiotics and steroids, things that might actually start to get into the food chain um, from, uh, from cows, melamines, mycotoxins, dyes, bisphenol A, uh, uses of plasticides and plastics. Again, there's, there's a concern there that there could, could be a contamination in foods. So there's various different compounds that can be extracted following the catches technique. And there are other similar techniques as well, for example, the sweet technique in Sweden. So just to give you a little bit more information about the Geno Grinder, it's a fully programmable homogenizer for plant and animal tissue. The samples are broken up by using a beat, beat, beating method. And the, one of the unique features of the Geno Grinder is it has a purely vertical shaking motion. So the clamp is moving up up and down in a purely vertical motion, which ensures a uniform and reproducible sample, sample processing action. And the clamp is also highly versatile. So you have a clamp that allows you to clamp in all kinds of different vial sizes and tighter plates. And the sample preparation is typically done in one or two minutes. Just looking in a little bit more detail underneath the lid here. So here's the adjustable clamp with a quick release button on it. And you can see here we have actually six tighter plates stacked, but we can also actually put in 16 Falcon tubes. You can see on the bottom right here, the 50 ml tubes. And it can take tubes from uh, 2 ml right up to those 50 ml tubes. And more recently, we've actually introduced some holders for much larger jars, up to 25 ounces. And the clamp speed is adjustable from 500 to 1750 strokes per, per minute. So the slower speeds are used more for mixing and then the higher speeds are used more for the homogenization process. So what about the Juno grinder for catches? Well, obviously the, one of the biggest advantages is the, is the, the uh, throughput that the Juno grinder can offer compared to handshaking. So handshaking, you might be able to hold up to four tubes in each hand. The Juno grinder there can hold up to 16 Falcon tubes, or it can hold up to 24 of the 50 ml tubes. So there's the immediate obvious advantage of using the Juno grinder is you can have a much higher throughput. The other benefits of are the improved consistency. So the the shaking being very uniform, there's no variation in the mixing or homogenization process. If you compare to perhaps people shaking 
Falcon tubes at the beginning of the day compared to the end of the day, or people, or different people in the lab have a different way of shaking. So there's there's complete consistency here. There's consistency within a run and from run to run. And then the actual mixing process itself, we're typically recommending to set the Juno grind at 1,500 strokes a minute versus, let's say, approximately 200 times a minute for manual shaking. That obviously is going to improve the extraction process. And then we're going to hopefully uh, relieve the workers in the lab from fatigue. We're going to eliminate strain and we're going to save everybody time. One thing we do recommend with the uh, the catcher's <coughs> um, uh, technique is to include some grinding media in the vials. <coughs> so you can see here we have some ceramic angle cut cylinders at the bottom here, part number 2183. These are listed on our website. These were specifically designed by us for catchers to help mix up the samples and break down some of the, the clumps of salt uh, that, were, that are being used to mix in with the sample itself. Uh, you can also use grinding balls if you prefer, but we do recommend to use these ceramic angle cut cylinders. So a few years ago, we actually did a study. Uh, Patty Atkins uh, was uh, one of the people that uh, did the study in conjunction with um, some people at Spec Sample Prep. So what was done is we compared the two methods of handshaking to mechanical shaking in the Juno grinder. So we had fresh strawberries, apples and celery cut into small chunks, and then we spiked them with, with five parts per million of 13 common pesticides. So the sample set A, we basically homogenized in a blender, we added the salt, shook them by hand, and then we centrifuged them for three minutes at 3,500 RPM. And then sample set B, we shook them in the Juno grinder at 1,500 strokes a minute with a ceramic grinding cylinder. And then we went through the same process of centrifugation at three minutes at 3,500 RPM. And for a third set, what we actually did is we did a kind of all-in-one method where we basically homogenized and then we shook the samples as well as an all-in-one process to see if that would work as well. And this application, though, I won't go into too much detail here today. I'll just give you some broad results. But if you want to see the original application note and the full information from the original study, it's application note number 24. And it's, about, it's entitled uh, a catcher's technique, a modified catcher's technique for the a Juno grinder, that's available on our website to download in full. So the results were pretty clear here. The apple, we have the blue bars for the manually shaken samples and then the red bars for the samples shaken in the Juno grinder. And you can see clearly here there was a higher recovery for some of these pesticides, for most, all of the pesticides in fact. And then some of the pesticides were barely visible in the samples that were shaken manually. And the same results for the celery. You can see here the red bars for the Juno grinder, clearly higher recovery compared to the blue bars. And then again, some of those pesticides here on the left were barely visible for the manually shaken samples. And then the all-in-one uh, process where we both homogenized and shook the samples together, the green bar here, again, you can see very good recoveries. So we're helping you skip a step here by basically homogenizing the samples as well. So in conclusion, we can see a greater pesticide recovery from the samples mixed with the Juno grinder. And also then with the all-in-one process, we can show that homogenization in the presence of solvents and salts is also a method that can be used as well to save more time. Oops. One other thing I wanted to add today is the fact that we can also run samples cold in the Juno grinder. So there has been some studies with some more of this temperature sensitive pesticides where they don't want to damage or lose any of those pesticides due to heat buildup. So the Juno grinder, we have this ability to grind up samples before you do extraction using cold blocks. These cryo blocks here, as we call them, they take the vials, the same vials, and then we can pre-cool them in the cryo station here on the right using liquid nitrogen, or if you prefer, you can pre-cool them with dry ice. And then we actually clamp in the block with the vials into the Juno grinder. And that, that keeps those samples cold during the grinding process. It also helps you grind tougher samples as well. It's a quick user reference list. Well, the Juno grinder is now being used around the world, especially in institutes, uh, international institutes or international companies that want to replicate their procedures if they have standard operating procedures and they want to use the same process or the same products around the world. So here's some examples of some of these companies and institutes that are using the Juno grinder. 
We do have another option to the Juno Grinder, the Mini G. It's basically a compact version of the Juno Grinder. So the Mini G is essentially the same type of product. It shakes the samples, but it's just a lower throughput version here. So it's a great option for lower throughput labs. We have the same shaking motion, just a slightly slower speed. So the max speed is 1500. And then the clamp supports the same vials as the Juno Grinder. Just, again, it's just less of them. So 60 times 50 ml vials, for example. Okay, that concludes uh, my section of the presentation. Uh, we're moving on now to the uh, the standards part of the presentation. I'm going to hand over to Patty. Uh, Patty, are you there? Would you like to just run over these uh, slides here for the standards? Sure. Thanks a lot, Tim. Uh, I just wanted to um, put a, give you some information to go along with your catchers. You're usually testing for pesticide residues. So one important part of that process is to make sure you have certified reference materials, you have internal standards and pesticide mixes. So at Spec Certiprep, we have uh, different um, pesticide mixes in different types of kits. We have single compound, multi-compound mixes. And if you're doing work in cannabis, we have all the state and uh, Canada regulated pesticides for cannabis as well. So these could be an important part of your catcher's work. If you need to do a catcher's method, built into the method, there are catcher's internal standards. We also have those as well. So if you have any questions about pesticides and pesticide standards, I'll be online to answer them when Tim gets to the questions and answers. And if you are interested, we have the pesticide guide for solubility. These are our pesticide kits. There are uh, 10 kits of pesticide. I think it's 144 pesticides total across 10 kits. And we've created this physical guide called the pesticide uh, solubility guide. And it has a lot of useful technical information. Um, which sol solvents they're soluble in, what is the, the density, what is the melting point, what is the boiling point, what is the formula for a whole bunch of different pesticides. So this is a very helpful guide and we can either send it to you as a PDF or if you physically want a copy, we can get in touch with you and you send us your mailing address and we'll mail you out a pesticide guide for attending the, the webinar and the demonstration today. That's all I have, Tim, back to you. Okay, thanks very much, Patty. So we're getting towards the end of the presentation now. Um, we're actually gonna move on now to the live demo. Hopefully it goes smoothly. We have Eric in the lab. Um, I think you can see Eric. Um, I'm gonna make Eric the presenter now, and hopefully we'll both see Eric. Eric, are you there? Aha, I think we have Eric. Can you hear me now? I can. Just one thing, Eric, I just wanted to remind people, if they want to, if they can't see Eric in full view, you can choose who's talking and you should be to see Eric in full view so you get the full screen. So over to you, Eric. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tim, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Eric Smith. I'm the application scientist here at Spec Sample Prep. So today we're going to do a quick demonstration of the catcher's method using the 2010 Geno Grinder. Uh, the method we're gonna to use today is gonna to be based on the AOAC method. Uh, the step is gonna include the agitation steps, the extraction steps, and then the cleanup steps. So first, the agitation step, which is typically done by hand, as was mentioned in the uh, presentation. But the Geno Grinder, we're gonna prove that, it was proven with the graphs that how it's much easier to do Geno grinder than doing by hand. All the samples will be treated in the same type of agitation steps. So the 2010 model, which is completely programmable through touchscreen, where you can control the runtime, you can control the rest period, the number of cycles, and the speed. You also can control whether you want to store or recall programs. Other features include administrative uh, lockout, self-diagnostics. Here we have a visible screen, which provides excellent area to the sample area. We also have an adjustable clamp that is easy to operate. You simply press quick release button and hold, and you can pull the knob up, the clamp lid, to accommodate tighter plates, tubes, 
jars, and vials. At this point, I want to point out the genome, uh, the mini G, which, as Tim said, is a smaller version of the genome grinder, but is capable of also doing the catcher's method. Here, the clamp can hold six 50 milliliter centrifuge tubes as compared to the Geno grinder, which can hold 16 maximum. The samples that we are going to demonstrate today includes strawberries, kiwi, and apples. The AOC method requires that 15 grams of sample preparation is needed for the catcher's method. These sample, samples are typically done in an aqueous environment, which is not a problem for fresh fruit since they can contain a significant amount of water. If you're doing dry fruit, then you will have to add water to the tube. So for example, if you had five grams of dry fruit, you will add 10 grams of water to equal 15 grams, which satisfies the method. The samples need to be pre-chopped before they're placed in the tube. So here I have strawberries that have been pre-chopped. We're going to simply add the special ceramic cylinders, which are wedge-shaped or angler-shaped. We add them to the tube. We're going to add two in this case. And then we're going to add 15 milliliters of acetonitrile which is the separation solvent in a partitioning process. So we add that, we apply the cap and prepare the samples to load in the genome grinder. The other two samples, I've added the ceramic cylinders and also the solvent. So to add the samples into, samples into the genome grinder, we remove the lid by holding and pressing the quick, quick release knob and then pulling the lid off. Next, we add the special foam holder, which can hold 16 15, 50 milliliter tubes. We simply side the uh, foam holder over the threaded rod onto the base. Since we're only running three samples today, we want to place each sample in the corners of the foam holder to balance the clamp. We'll use an empty tube as a placeholder. Next, take the lid, hold and press the quick release knob, and simply slide onto the threaded rod down to the tops. Give a quick turn to secure. Close the lid. We want to set the run time for one minute with a speed of 1500 strokes per minute, zero rest. No cycles will be included. Simply press run. With respect to time, we're not going to actually run the samples, but when the samples are complete, simply lift the lid, hold and press the quick release button, lift the lid off. Now we want to take the samples and we want to place them inside of a centrifuge to separate the solid layer from the liquid layer. So we'll place the samples in the centrifuge. We'll close the lid. We'll set the runtime to 3,500 RPMs for three minutes. So we can imagine that the samples were centrifuge. After the run is complete, open the centrifuge, and we'll remove the samples. Here I have examples of what the sample will look like after it has been centrifuged. So you can see the liquid layer is completely separated from the solid layer. Here we have the kiwi. And here we have the apple. After the layer is separated, 
Next comes the cleanup step, which is designed to move, remove water and undesired core extracts. You simply want to take eight milliliters. It's best to use uh, Eppendorf to extract eight milliliters, and you want to add it to a 15 milliliter tube. Now, in most cases or kits, the 15 milliliter tube, it contains the salt matrix. The salt matrix includes magnesium sulfate, six grams, and 1.5 grams of sodium acetate. There are some kits that do contain a small amount of activated carbon, which is designed to remove pigments like chlorophyll that can interfere with the analysis step. So here I have some samples that I've already added. The liquid phase to the 15, 15 milliliter tubes with the salt matrix. We have the strawberries, kiwis, and also apple. So at this point, we would like to place them back into the Geno grinder and give them a simple agitation step for one minute at 1500 RPMs. Since the Geno grinder is so versatile, we have a special foam holder also for 15 milliliter tubes. We simply slide it over the rod onto the clamp base. We want to again place the sample since they are limited to only three into the corners. We'll use an empty tube as a placeholder. Apply the lid by sliding over the threaded rod, holding the quick release button down to the top of the tubes. Give a quick turn to secure. We want to close the lid. We're going to set the runtime for one minute at a speed of 1500 strokes per minute. After the run has complete, we simply open the lid, hold the quick release button to lift the lid off the clamp. We want to now remove the samples and also place back inside of the centrifuge. Close the lid. We want to set the RPM for 3500 with a quick runtime of one minute and we'll press start. After the centrifuge is complete, we open the lid and now the sample is prepared for the extraction step. Here I have a prepared sample that shows how the separation of the salts are to the bottom and the organic layer is on the top. From this point, we will take the amount needed to do the analysis step. This kind of concludes my example of going from the catcher's method, showing how it's simple to pretty much homogenize, centrifuge, and then extraction. But as Tim showed, the Geno grinder is capable of much more sample types. And some types that we want to show here, some before and after samples, include samples like seeds, where you can see the seeds have been completely homogenized to a powder form. Other examples include corn, here we have pharmaceutical tablets that can also be ground up for analysis. Coffee. and also cannabis. Not sure if you can see this. Let me see if I can dump this out for you. Let's 
So here's an example of the before with the cannabis and at this ground in the Geno grinder, the after. This concludes my demonstration of lab, Tim, and I'll send it back to you where we can take questions. Thanks very much, Eric. That was a great presentation. Just want to add one note, the, uh, the cannabis actually, the sample we use in the lab is actually hemp, right, Eric? Uh, because in New Jersey, we are still not allowed to uh, grind up uh, cannabis. So I think that was actually a hemp sample, but they're very similar sample types. Yes. Sure. Okay. So it doesn't look like we actually have any questions on the chat. Um, so I'll wrap up uh, the uh, the webinar. Uh, just a couple of uh, things I wanted to mention here before we leave. Uh, we do have a great demo program um, in the US where you can actually um, loan one of our products for one to two weeks to try it out for yourself. So if you're interested, uh, please contact us. And it's not just for these products here, it's in fact for all of our products. So we have the freezer mill, the cryogenic grinder, our mixer mill, the high energy ball mill, amongst other things. So please let us know if you'd like to try one of those in your lab so you can really see how it works for your samples. We do have some videos as well available on our website, uh, real videos showing how the samples are ground up. So as Eric said today, we didn't want to really uh, go through the full grinding process because that was going to be quite time consuming. But if you want to see the actual products in action, grinding or shaking, we do have some of those videos on the website. And also we have a sample test program available as well. So if you'd like, we can actually accept samples. You can send them to us with pre-approval and then we'll develop a method for your particular sample type. So those are additional resources that we have available for our customers. So thanks again, everybody, for joining us today. I hope you found it interesting. And as I said, this has been recorded, so we'll be posting it to our website soon. And uh, please contact us if you have any further questions. Thanks very much. Goodbye from us. Thank you.